So our next presenter, it, it's Maciej Trender from Poland. He works at Atomic Technologies and uh, he will talk about Angular Schematics. Please, Maciej. Hello. So, as has been already said, my name is Maciej Trader. Uh, I have a like to have the same handle under every social network which you could imagine. Uh, so you can follow me on all of those. Uh, as has been said as well, I am from Krakow in Poland. Uh, on my daily basis, I am working for Akamai Technologies as a senior software development engineer. Uh, I am an Angular passionate. Uh, I am also contributing in open source. Uh, and today, uh, I will tell you a story, in fact, about my open source contribution. Uh, quickly about uh, my background. Who knows this company? One person. <laughs> Okay, so what Akamai is, uh, we are the content delivery network. We have uh, a couple thousand of servers across the world. And what we are doing for our customers, we are trying to uh, ship the content to their customers uh, quicker uh, if they on board on our network. And we serve over 30% of the traffic in the whole internet. To the point, Angular Schematics, the outline for today is that the boring part would be my own story, that would be the quick one. Then I will go quickly by the case studies for Schematics, what are the problems or challenges which we are trying to solve. Then I would go with the Schematics part, uh, finally move to reporting and testing. Everything I plan to indicate by the small bar at the bottom, so uh, if you will get lost somewhere, uh, just by looking here, you will get known where we are. So let's start with the story. And the story, like every innovation, begins with idea. So I had yet another idea for one million application. Uh, I wanted to create the warehouse management app. Uh, and I want to make it SEO friendly. I want to make the web application. That was, that's the first thing. So I want to create it SEO friendly as much robust as it could be, I wanted to make it offline working, and of course, I want to deploy on cheap environment. So, I was figuring out what can I use for that. Uh, it was the times when Angular was in the, Angular 2 was in the beta version, uh, so there were a lot of uh, boilerplates around. I found out the boilerplate for Angular Universal, uh, the boilerplate for the serverless uh, starter as well. Everything was hosted on GitHub. So I just clone it, create yet another boilerplate, and host it for others as well. The project was quite successful because, uh, as you can see on the slide, the 30 clones weekly, for, in my opinion, that was a miracle that anyone want to use something what I prefer. So I started to promote it, and then I met a person when I was posting league across the, across the internet and asking people or their opinions about this boilerplate. I met the guy who is named Sander Elias. Uh, I strongly recommend you to follow this person if you are interested in Angular CLI stuff. And he just posed me that one killer question. Why I didn't use schematics? if they are in the beta stage already. So I'm asking, to, asking myself, is the Git the right place where you should host the solutions for others, the solutions which you want other developers to use, which you want to share? And that leads us to the two use cases which I prepared for today. The first use case is say hello to John, and John wants to utilize the library which you prepared for him. The steps without schematics, uh, is to go through some uh, README. You need to find this, uh, find your solution, read about it, learn about it, finally decide to use it. So he decides to install it via Node Package Manager. Then the John is going to the code. He's trying to uh, utilize this library. So he is, of course, running into some issues. When he is running to the issues, then he is going back to the documentation. From the documentation, he goes back to implementation. And this what you get at the end, you can 
looked at till the end of the world because there is always some issue and there is always something to be solved. Another use case is that meet Anna. She's working uh, for the corporation uh, and this corporation is producing some great product but the pro this is the core product of the corporation built up of the smaller pieces. So a part of Anna there are also other developers or other teams which are building up this, uh, this application. Let's imagine that all of them are building it in the microservices architecture. So every team is building their own backend. They are also building probably a front end. Uh, so the problem comes when Anna and their colleagues uh, need to implement, let's say, the, some form with the button, with the input, and so on. So everyone have a little bit taste of what is nice, uh, but for sure the, the company can't, can't agree with that, that every part of the product will have the different user experience. So to avoid this situation, there is often a team which is called the front-end engineering or some, anything. Those are the guys who are providing the guidance for other developers how the product should be built uh, within our company. At Akamai, on our end, uh, this is a screenshot example from the API Gateway. This is the product which I am working with. And here you can, you can find that, for example, we have an active button, a non-active button, and primary button. We have as well some combo boxes. Uh, we have icons which are uh, saying customer what is the stage of their configuration, if it's active or not active. We have inputs. And they need to be, they need to be same across the whole system to give the exact same user experience and don't give our customer a feeling that they are getting lost uh, within our application. And that's the point where schematics comes. The schematics uh, is just an idea provided by the Angular CLI. Let me ask you a question. How many of you are using Angular CLI to build up the project? Okay, some. How many were using schematics before? Okay, no. You think that nobody has used schematics, but in fact, everyone who is using CLI is using schematics, because what schematics is, is just a set of instructions for the CLI, how to manipulate the file system, uh, and what changes you want to apply to the file system, together with installation of some library, or when you are generating the component, the service, or anything different in the Angular world. The nice thing about those, uh, those instructions and those rules is that they are chainable. What I have on my mind is that you can combine together a couple of schematics provided by the different developers from the other sources uh, and, and make a chain of, uh, of instructions. Another great thing is that they are th their atomicity. So they behave like a commit uh, within the database. So until all of the changes would be successfully applied, they are not applied to the file system. Everything is going on on the file system snapshot. So how Angular is looking for, the dependent, for, for those dependencies, how Angular uh, knows that there is a schema, to, how it's working with it. Whenever you type the ng-add, ng-generate, or something like that, particular, let's think about the ng-add, what Angular CLI does, first asks Node.js for dependency, instances, then it's looking up for those schematics, for the script which is prepared, and finally apply that to the file system. But how Angular knows if this library is provided with some instructions? And all of that, is described in the package.json file. If you want to create the schematics for your library, you need to add one keyword to the package.json and say explicitly Angular where it should look for the schematics. So you are pointing to the collection.json. And what collection.json is, is a file which combines information 
about what commands are available within your library. For example, ng-add on this case. So, we are saying Angular that here you have ng-add and whenever user use the ng-add with my library, I want to use this factory. This is the place where the steps are, are, uh, are accessible for you. And this file, the schema JSON, is the place where you can take a look what are the parameters which can be used together with this comment. For example, uh, on my end, if you will type the ng at ng toolkit universal, uh, this, is the, this is the schematics which you add SEO support for Angular application. You can, for example, uh, say to CLI if you want to uh, use the HTTP cache module or not. This is also the place where you can set an interactive parameters. So uh, those which are not specifying, specified within the part with the uh, dash dash, then CLI can ask explicitly for those uh, in the inter interactive model. Okay, so we have the, our options in here, we have parameters. Let's now go to the factory. So that's the place where we are saying the, we are factually giving the instructions uh, to CLI. This is also the place where you can utilize the options from the schema JSON by the past parameter. So something such simple as this, as this thing. Uh, okay, give me a, give me a sec. So we have the we have the schematics.ts. I forgot to mention that this is the file where you need to export the function, and this function, uh, a part of its. Uh, taking the options as a parameter, they, it needs to, uh, need to return the rule object. And the rule object is something what is utilized by the CLI. What rule is, is yet another function which takes the tree as a parameter. Tree is representing the file system, and at the end it returns the tree. And the, tree, the, the, the file system which is modified. On tree object, you can call, for example, the create uh, method and specify what is, the, what is the name of the file and what should be the output of the file. So this uh, particular snippet would create the file called hello and with the content world inside. With the tree object, uh, you can also uh, navigate within the directory, check if something exists, and do all of those uh, manipulation to the file system which comes to your head, to your head. There is also a useful object which is called recorder. You can see it here. The const recorder tree begin update. This is uh, an object which gives you yet another commit approach to, uh, to manipulating the, um, the file system. Okay, let's go to the chaining. I said that rules are chainable. What does it mean? That you can, for example, program your, each of your rules to the separate constants or variable. You can import it from some other library and combine them with the chain function. What Angular CLI will do, it will apply the first rule on the tree object, then on the same tree object, with, if this rule will be passed, it will pass it to the next one, then to the next one, and then when the whole chain is successfully uh, finalized, it's, uh, it's applied to the real file system. So let's take a look uh, a little bit different, deeper at the first. We, we know already the, the basics. Let's look at the how you can utilize uh, the Angular schematics with your existing library. Let's assume that you want to add schematics to your library. So to do that, you need to go forward with a couple steps like create the schematics folder inside your project, place the, uh, place the whole structure inside. Of course, this structure is not said that if you will call this uh, catalog differently, it would work, it will. This is just what I proposed and what Angular CLI team proposed to keep, uh, to, to don't mess up what you have inside your library. You need, of course, to place the collection JSON, uh, which we already covered. Uh, for schematics, you need to prepare the separate uh, TypeScript compiler configuration. 
And finally, you need to uh, you need to adjust the package JSON which you are going to uh, which you are going to publish. Uh, this comes this goes with your library, and you are compiling the schematics together with your together with your library. Uh, the TypeScript configuration should be the really basic one because schematics is just a JavaScript uh, JavaScript file consumed by Node.js. So you are creating those additional files uh, in your project and adjusting the package JSON. Uh, if you will take a closer look, you will see one folder which I didn't mention here, here uh, previously, and this folder is called files. Uh, we will cover it really quickly. So the next, uh, so, so the following changes, this is the example of the package JSON of, this, uh, of the library. Uh, which uh, which consumes the uh, which consumes this uh, schematics or I would put it this way this is the package JSON of the project which is generating the library in the collection JSON as we already have we are pointing uh, to the factory and to the schema in the schema we have uh, this is just to, to recognize we have the parameters and let's take a look at the real schematics uh, factory, how it's, how it's looking. So first of all, to develop it, we, uh, we should, uh, we should um, import some dependencies from the Angular dev kit, uh, which, which will be useful for us. Uh, I am also importing the toolkit universal schema. Uh, this is the type file which I prepared on my own. I decide, I of course need to export my function. Uh, I'm going to, to change those, to change the rules which I'm going to create. And this is the place where the, the files, this catalog with, uh, which is called files, comes to the action. When your schematics is applying a lot of changes or you are creating some new files which have a lot of content, of course it doesn't make sense to keep this content inside the code. You can prepare those files together with uh, some, uh, together with some uh, places which you will just replace uh, later on to, um, to, to, to adjust the, the file for this particular project uh, and use the, use the merge, uh, merge with option uh, which uh, is provided by the Angular team together with Couple, couple merge strategies. One of those is override, but there is also strategy like merge. So if some file is already met within the project and it's uh, in the catalog which you are trying to copy into this project, then uh, in this case it will be overwritten, but it could be, for example, merge or it could be ignored and so on and so on and so on. Uh, the final, the final thing uh, which, uh, which we are going is to push the, push the rule uh, with, uh, which is merging the content and the other rules which are, uh, for example, manipulating the, uh, the existing files and adding the hello world uh, string to each, uh, to each file within the directory. So this is, uh, that was about the ng-add particularly. Another function, which another uh, CLI action which you can utilize is the ng-update. This is a comment which is used uh, in the case that the new version of your library uh, is, is shipped by you. So for example, you have fixed some bug or placed some enhancement uh, your user has already applied the ng-add, so you don't need to make all of the changes uh, from the beginning. You just need to slightly, uh, slightly adjust uh, the, the project which uh, your user is creating. So in this case, when your, uh, when your library is, uh, is utilizing the ng-update, Angular is using for the migrations uh, migrations uh, field within the ng update. That's the place where you are saying which factory is responsible for the particular update. So let's assume that my user have installed the version 5 and he's updating to 6.3. 
what Angular CLI will do, it will apply all of those migrations just one after another. That's also a rule of thumb, and I strongly advise to use ng-add and update together. So just, use, just create the ng-add factory only uh, for the, for, on your first try, and then if even one person will, will utilize it, all of the changes and adjust, adjustment should go to the ng-update and then you can just, uh, from the ng app, for people who are installing the application, uh, push particular updates to the latest version. Okay. Uh, working with source code, what are the pitfalls? Uh, what, what are the pitfalls in the schematics? What you need to watch out? Uh, uh, what could be what could be running you into the troubles? So the task. The tree object treats every, every file within which you are manipulating as a just text file. Because it's a text file, it just has a special extension. But the problem comes when you have a simple, a really simple, uh, simple task to, for example, wrap some objects within the service, uh, on, or change occurrences of something, or you are looking for a constructor because you want to add the dependency injection to it. And on my end, uh, I was, it was really hard for me to don't use something like regular expression. If I am using for constructor, why don't use regex? I'm just using for the particular set of content and I, I want to put something into it. It shouldn't be something easier. So let's say I want to check all the occurrences of the window. I'm getting the code from the file. Uh, I'm applying the, um, the super simple regex. It should work. Someone, someone thinks that it will doesn't work. OK, I see that all of us agree. But what in situation that I have a code like that? I have the window inside the string. I have a window. The uh, window word used in some variable name. It can be in particular different different contexts. And the problem with that regex is that after applying it, I will not only make a bullshit by changing the the, the strict content. I will factually break the code by changing the uh, the variable name. Maybe this variable expo is exported somewhere. Maybe it's. Uh, it's important from some library, so I will break the import statement. So to avoid situations like that, uh, I advise you to use the TypeScript and start to behave like a TypeScript compiler. So what you can do is to add the importing TypeScript to your schematics. Again, we have the, uh, the export function. We are taking, getting the content of the, of the files which we want to, uh, which we want to change. Uh, in this particular example, the file is called sourcefile.ts. Using the, using the source file type from the TypeScript, we are creating the object which is representing, uh, representing the, what will be consumed by the TypeScript compiler. And now we can navigate within each node inside the source code. We can uh, look through them, check if this particular node is variable or it is a class declaration, or if it's a class member, uh, and so on and so on and so on. So here I am checking if I got a constructor. If I have a constructor and the constructor has some body, I want to add the console log to it, just a simple thing. And finally, I am committing this update to my recorder which I get from the, from the tree object. What more you can do with the source code, with the TS object, uh, what you can check is to check all of those is something. And much, much more. This, this is just a set of the, of the Boolean functions which I am using on my end, uh, on my end most, uh, in most of the cases. Okay, so I told you that everything is around the rule object, which takes tree as a parameter, the path system, and returns tree. In fact, the rule can take 
one more parameter, which is called the context. I have on my mind this, what you, what you see here, the context. And what context is, it's representing, on my end I am understanding this as a, this particular Node.js instance. So I can, for example, ask Node.js to install the project. I can, within the tree object, I can manipulate the package JSON, add new dependencies, and then on the context object, I can ask it to install those dependencies. And also make other Node.js uh, Node uh, related stuff. Let's move to the second use case, just to recall. The Anna and, the, and her problem with, uh, uh, with other teams and that they are trying to follow the same guidelines to keep the user interface constant. So for this purpose, you can of course uh, write the schematics uh, from scratch uh, as you are, you are doing that for the new library, for the existing library, or you can, or you can use the yet another CLI which is uh, provided by the Angular team. And this, this CLI is called the Schematics CLI. Uh, and it's for building the, the, the schematics uh, on, which are used uh, in most cases to, to generate some code in the existing projects. It's, on my end, uh, from my experience, it's not, super, it's not very useful uh, if you have a use case that you have the module and you are providing people the module or dependency which you uh, want them to utilize. It's much better uh, to, to adjust the every generate command from the CLI. So generate component, generate service, generate root resolver, and so on and so on and so on. After applying the schematics blank, you will just, uh, you will get a file uh, which uh, you will get not only the file, but the whole project which has the basic schema JSON, basic factory, etc. So let's assume that in our case, uh, the problem which Anna has, that in this particular company, every component, every template uh, contains some copyrights in it. And let's say that we want to add the hello from schematics to every uh, to every TypeScript file. So we want to change the generate component, uh, the generate component behavior. So what I'm going to do is to use the original generate component from the schematics uh, Angular. What you need to remember in such case is to definitely install this dependency because compiler won't uh, shout at you if you won't install it in your project. As you can see, it's passed just as a string, uh, so compiler doesn't know that this is something which should be installed. And after applying this schematic, I can go within the generated content, uh, what the original, original schematics has done, uh, check, uh, and on our end, we are checking if the file finishes with the .ts extension, and if it is, we are just applying uh, this, the, the tree overwrite method, which is, uh, which is um, changing the content of the source code. When you are using the external schematics, uh, it, it should be, I strongly advise again, to use also the original schema for, for this particular case. So, as you can see here, instead of the defining my own schema, uh, with my own options, I am pointing to something what I have in the node, node modules already. So what I installed as a dependency. And now, when, when, this, uh, when I got this all in place, I can build up the project and finally use the schematics. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the command, the engine generate my component, my component hello world. Is after building and linking the project with schematics in the uh, project where I want to test them. So uh, I'm just mimics the installation, uh, the installation behavior. Okay, but it may not work. Uh, you can create your schematics. You can apply the compilation, unit tests, and so on. Everything could be working on your end. But every environment is a little bit different. 
you have differences between the, between the operating systems. Some people are using Linux, some using Windows. Uh, they have different machines. At, uh, everyone has different code style. So it's really hard to predict and it's really hard to write something what is, uh, what is universal. Uh, so how to, how to work with that? And that moves us to the reporting. How to get information about to what issues people are running uh, with our scripts. At the beginning, I told you that rule is returning the rule. And in fact, this is not the true. Because rule, this is the, this is the uh, return statement. The rule can also return the observable of tree. It can neither return another rule or, the, or it can return nothing in case that you don't want to apply some changes, for example. So that gives us a chance to use something together with the schematics, which is not really the schematics itself. I can call some other side action to be performed. And there is a really great tool, which is called Bugsnack. This is the tool which is used uh, for getting the issues, getting the issue reports from production for, for example, your front-end application, that if your customer will, will run into issues on their machine, then the whole stack trace, the report about it, will be sent to the Bugsnack system, so you can take a look into that. But the bug stack, you can also utilize it within the schematics. Thanks to that, the schematics rule can return the observable. I can just pipe to it and make a, a, a catch an error if it would occur. So if any of my rules will throw an error, I can catch it and uh, utilize it to send the report about the stack trace, stack trace to my bug stack. And later on, just return the subject which contains the empty tree, what means for CLI that something failed and nothing should be applied. I can also add some nice error message to, to my uh, consumer that, okay, I see you run into the issue, but I know that the stack trace is in the system. Uh, you can also fill the bug, so it, could be, it would be easier a little bit, maybe. But I have all of the information already in hand. So this is, for, this is the uh, screenshot from the Bugsnack system that it's working and I, I got some error reports uh, on my end. Okay, last but not least. We know how to write schematics, how to report problems, how to test them. So let's start from the unit testing. I guess I assume that more of you are writing the unit tests for your, uh, for your application, so I'm not going to, uh, to focus on how to write unit tests with Angular, just how to adjust your unit tests for schematics. So what you need here is the schematic test runner. It's an object available from the, the, the delivered by the Angular team. And before each, uh, the, this is, uh, before each test, those tests are going to check the ng add option. You can use the schematics test runner. On my end, I am using the schematics Angular. I am also running the ng new because ng add can be used only on the existing project. So I am creating it with the original Angular schematics. Uh, and later on, when I have the app tree in hand, so I have the object which is representing the file system of a raw Angular project, I can use my, my runner to run my particular schematics and later on check if the changes applied to this, uh, to this file system are as I am expecting. For example, if inside the CLI config I am put, some, uh, put some options or you can check if, if something, uh, if some file has been created, and so on, and so on, and so on. But this is just a unit test. What about the end-to-end -end scenario? I am the guy who is not believing in, uh, in unit tests. I want always to perform, to, to check my, my solutions in the battlefield. And the problem with schematics is, uh, to pro the problem with libraries uh, is uh, that 
to make the whole end-to-end -end test, I need to publish it to the NPM registry. But I don't want to look like a moron and I don't want my consumers to see that I am making 100 publishes within the one day uh, because I don't know how to do something. So to do not shame myself, I strongly recommend the Vertaccio. This is a great tool which is a proxy between your machine and the NPM registry. So what Verdaccio is doing, uh, whenever you are, uh, if you are install it and set the NPM registry to your local host where Verdaccio is running, if you will type the NPM install command, it will go through the Verdaccio, take a look if Verdaccio has this dependency. Uh, if not, the Verdaccio will go to the real NPM and, uh, and pipe the, uh, the installation process and cache and, and later on this dependency will be cached in Verdaccio. But the other part which, is, which it could be used for is to publishing things. So I can publish something to Verdaccio, I can build, I can navigate into my schematics, build the pro project, publish it and then utilize the ng add my schematics like I would be using them with the regular NPM. But in this case, without shame, in case that something is not working. So we move to the end. Uh, that's the place, that's the link which I would like to ask you for a feedback. If you would spend just one minute on that, uh, I would more than appreciate. Oh, a couple of people are making pictures. More than a couple. Everyone. The feedback is anonymous, unfortunately. So one more time. Uh, my name is still same, and you can still catch me under the same handle which I strongly welcome, invite you to do. Thank you. Do we have any questions for Martin? Okay, <laughs> no questions. Okay, no, it was boring or you know everything? Uh, I wanted to uh, ask how do you check the results of the end-to-end -end testing? You look wow. at the file manually or...? That's a, that's a tough thing. On my end, I just prepared a bash script, which is... Uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a super dummy approach. Uh, so what I'm doing is, uh, is just a bash script, which is first of all setting up that holver that you're running it, setting up the the, en the environment variables, etc. then publish, then the script is creating the project, navigating inside, applying schematics, and checking, for example, if there are files inside, or uh, if, the, if the project still compiles, uh, or I can even run it, and with the script, make a call to the local host and check what is the, uh, what is the output. Uh, why I said call? Uh, because, uh, on my end, I was testing if, the, if I successfully applied the Angular Universal to the project, which is server-side rendering. So I am performing the call and taking a look if the HTML is generated or I'm still shipping just a uh, JavaScript with, uh, without the HTML. Is this uh, proxy really needed for such a, like, uh, do you actually care uh, if they see how many compilations we made or uh, it's a, also helps with security? Oh, could, could you try to ask it a different way? Because I think I don't, uh, I don't get what... So basically use this proxy end to end so that mm -hmm. uh, the end user doesn't see how many, compil how many NPM compiler we have made, right? Yes. But does it actually help outside of the preference of not trying to seem stupid? Yeah. <laughs> yes, but also, you know, if your if your library is highly used, used, 
uh, that's also prevent you from giving shit to the people. Yeah, that uh, they are trying to use it and, and, and it's not working. And you can just make sure before the final. You are more interested to get information about the bug from the proxy than from the production. Uh, okay. So that's that's the one thing. Another thing is shame. Yeah, that makes sense. It's very hard to unpublish things from the Yeah, that's true. I think that you have only 24 hours for unpublish. And after that, you need to write yeah. emails. Uh, please remove this. <laughs> please remove this. Yeah, <laughs> I am shamed. <laughs> Other questions? Okay, so we are thank done. you, Machi. Thank you. I'm going to switch now to Romanian. Vreau să vă mulțumesc foarte mult că ați venit. Ne bucurăm că ați venit în număr atât de mare. Și vă așteptăm și la anul.